Hello! In this video, we will learn how to solve a system of nonlinear equations, a system that looks like this, using the MATLAB programming language. Before we jump on the code, let us first explain the basic mechanism that MATLAB is using to solve the system of nonlinear equations. So, if this is your code, this is your MATLAB code for solving system of nonlinear equation, the MATLAB code take as an input an initial guess of your solution vector. In our case, the solution vector x consists of two components, x1 and x2. So, having an initial guess of x, let's denote this initial guess by x0, and plugging in this initial guess, the MATLAB code should iteratively produce a series of solutions. All these solutions are actually computed iteratively. That is, there is some, basically, an algorithm that updates the solutions based on previous value of the solutions and on some other parameters that we will not discuss right now. So the MATLAB code takes the initial guess of the solution and it iteratively approximates the solution. So after some iterations, your XN should approximate your true solutions. I have created a post that provides a detailed explanation of uh, the procedure I used uh, to uh, solve this equation using the, using the MATLAB programming language and uh, this code, its link, can be found in the description below this video. To solve the system of equations using MATLAB, the first step is to define a MATLAB function that will return the value of the left-hand side of this system for a given x. That is, we need to define a MATLAB function that, for a given x, returns the value of f. For example, if you set x to 1, 2, this function should evalu evaluate the expression on the left-hand side and should, for example, return you um, values which in this case can be I don't know like 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 so here is our function so this is the MATLAB function that for a given x for a given vector x returns the value of the left hand side and here it is x of 1 corresponds to the first entry of the vector x and x of 2 corresponds to the second entry of the vector x. Having x and calling this function, we can find the value of the left-hand side. Our goal is actually to call this function from another script. To do so, we need to save this function. So. By saving this function, let us save it in the folder folder on the desktop. And the folder name is nonlinear function, and you should save the function as follows. And you click on save. Okay. Now this function is saved. The next step is to set this mat this function to be in the MATLAB's path why this is important well we want to call this function from another script and this script has to know where matlab has stored this function so this can be achieved by setting the path and we click here on add with subfolders and we select our folder and you click on close and i'm not going to save this for further matlab session now you can even uh, call this function from uh, MATLAB command window. So you can write nonlinear function and you can set the values of let's say 1, 2 
and you should get the result. So what you're getting here is the value of the function at the point 1 and 2. Now that we have defined a function that basically defines the left-hand side of the nonlinear system of equation, we can create another script and from this script we are going to call this function and we are going to solve our problem. So here is the script. So the first line is a standard line, right? Clear pack, uh, clear screen, right? Then uh, the code line tree, on the code line tree we defined we define basically the parameters for the solver. So if you're going to use the MATLAB F solve function, this function can call several algorithms and we can choose the algorithm with the parameter algorithm. In this case, you're going to use trust region method. We are going to say, uh, set the display parameter to iterations, which means that we want to basically uh, monitor the progress of solving the system of equations and we want to uh, plot uh, the residual values we are going to use the parameter use parallel true this parameter is not necessary for this problem since this system of equation system of equations is relatively small however for larger systems it's always a good practice to use the power of your uh, processors maybe you have a multi-core processor in my case I have a multi-core uh, system and here the last parameter is the optimality tolerance in our case we're going to set 10 to the minus 8 here we set the initial guess here is our initial guess and finally with this line of code code line 7 we call fsol function we specify that the left hand side of the system is defined at nonlinear function. So we say to MATLAB, call this function to evaluate the left hand side. We set the initial guess and we set the options. And finally, we can define manually uh, our left hand side just to verify the solution. So if we execute these three lines of codes, we obtain something like this. So here is our solution. So what you can see here is the progress. We are plotting the progress since we are setting the parameter display to iteration. So this is iteration, this is function count, this is basically the value of your left hand side and this is the norm of the, set, of the step used to solve. And this is the final solution um, vector. This is our vector x that approximates the solution. This is x of 1, this is x of 2. Finally, if you want to verify by yourself uh, how far, how good is your solution, you can evaluate these three lines of code and you can see that your norm of your F of your left hand side is 10 to the minus 15, which means that you have solved your system quite accurately, up to machine precision, basically. Thank you very much for your attention.